Okay, we're going to continue to dig a little bit deeper here. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, now we have the base of a DLL. We're going to go ahead and figure out what do we do with the base of the DLL? Well, the short answer is we're going to go ahead and parse the export table in order to start walking those exports. So um, let's continue on here with our exploration. Uh, let's see where we left off. We have our DLL base uh, that's moved into EBX. And so as a reminder, uh, as you can see here, EBX is going to contain that image base. And I might sprinkle in, let's see here, uh, a few notes to myself because it's easy to forget, especially as we kind of move further and further along and, and kind of deeper into the code, especially as we're also going back and forth between the disassembly and the and the decompiler of the pseudocode. Um, let's see, we have the base and that's moved into EBX. And now you'll see that this is the next region of memory where that image base is used. So this is another sequence of instructions that's used to calculate um, this value that is used, you know, EBX plus whatever this EAX value is, minus one, and that is moved into EAX. Well, we know that this is the base of a PE file. And if you, you know, just to, to refresh real quick on the, you know, the beginning 64 bytes of a PE file, it's the image DOS header, and the last four bytes is the address of new. So at an offset of three C hex, that's this value right here. And this, this is a, an offset, whether on disk or in memory, that if you add this value to the base, you'll get the next section. So as you can see here, uh, eight zero, add it to the beginning of this file, it takes us right here and the bytes 5045000, that's the image NT headers, the PE signature, um, and that denotes the beginning of the image NT headers themselves. And so if we wanted to, we could step through with our debugger, right? Sometimes and oftentimes, if I just don't wanna try to figure out the math of something, I'll just step through. Uh, here's the instruction where we have EBX plus EAX minus one. And so if we, uh, step ahead, I could have just set a breakpoint, right? But EAX, EAX is 3D, right there. If we subtract one, that's 3C, that's the offset for LFA new, right? And, and so again, it's just a, a method that has been built into this binary as a way to try to, to try to throw off our ability to observe or detect that key offset. Um, this is another one of those though, that even if you didn't recognize it, this offset of 78 hex, especially in context of a DLL base, that's a pretty pretty well-known one as well. That represents the image export directory. Um, remember, we're in code that is trying to identify exports of the DLL in order to resolve functionality. So it makes sense that it's looking for that export directory structure. Uh, we can go back here to O and O. Uh, I am looking at the lock bit binary in order to explore the structure. Uh, it will be the same. The only difference is that with this executable, there will be no exports. So where do we find the exports? Well, I'm going to close the DOS header. We'll expand the image NT headers because in code, this is now where we've navigated to. And if you expand the optional header, image optional header, and scroll down to these data directories, the export directory will be first. And you'll see that there is going to be a virtual address, an RVA, and a size for each, well, most of the, all of these will have an RVA in size. Um, not all of these are RVAs though. That's irrelevant for this discussion. All we care about is the export table. And how do you get a, an offset? Go back to Ida, how do you get an offset of 78 hex? Well, this one's actually quite easy because of where this image NT header falls, but from the base of this structure, offset of 78 hex will always be the export directory, and in particular, the RVA for the export directory. So this is at an offset of F8 from the beginning of the file. And if we take F8 and we subtract the offset to the image NT headers, which is 80, you'll see we get an offset of 78, right? So that's where that sort of magic offset comes into play. Okay, so this is the image export uh, directory. Um, that is another structure that we can add. So we can add struct type. 
Uh, I might have already added it here, but it's fine. Just start typing, and there we go. There's the image export directory. Uh, now, this this is one of those structures that uh, you'll see here. It's it's not going to be found by Windabug. Uh, there's many, many times that I'm too lazy to try to figure out exactly why that symbol isn't there. Um, if in doubt, you can always go look at, because likely you'll have the, the Windows SDK installed. All right, so here's the path, uh, program files, Windows kits version, you might have to, that might vary for you, include, that might vary for you, um, and then winnt.h. Uh, and you'll see here's the image export directory. Okay, and I just went ahead and annotated these for the, the video here, what the, where these offsets are gonna be located, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to see the mapping here when we look at this in IDA. Um, but the most relevant, typically, when you're doing this kind of analysis is the, let's see, the number of functions and the number of names. Those will be at offsets 14 and 18. And then we have the address of functions, the address of names, and the address of name ordinals. So um, why a difference here uh, between functions and names? Well, some functions will be exported by ordinal only. That is just a numeric value. Not every export has to have a name. This malware is contingent upon looking up the APIs by name. So it's going to use here, you'll see in just a moment, uh, the number of names. That way it only iterates through the amount of names that are exported from the DLL. Then we have address of functions, address of names, and address of name ordinals. Now in this structure, these are actually RVAs that are gonna to point to arrays, and those arrays are gonna contain elements that are gonna also be RVAs that point to the actual function address, pointer to the strings, which are the names of the APIs, and then this array of word values that are actually indexes. And how you have to put all these three things together is that um, you're gonna find that it's going to walk sequentially this array of names, and when it finds an API that it wants to resolve, it'll use whatever index that name is at. So if it's like the fifth API name, that's the fifth index, it's gonna index into the name of ordinals, and that value becomes the index into this array address of functions. So you're gonna see all three of these come together here uh, as we analyze this code, if not in this video here, in one of these upcoming. Okay, so this then moves into EDX, uh, the image export directory. And what it's testing is it's actually testing to say, okay, uh, does this particular thing I found in memory, because it can find the executable, uh, if it has no value, as you can see here, this is our executable in 010, the virtual address for the export directory is empty. Um, if it doesn't have an export directory, skip it, right? It's gonna move on to the next item in this doubly linked list. That is the next image or DLL that's loaded in memory. Okay, if we get past that, so there is an export directory, then the next thing that happens is uh, there's this LEA into EDI ECX plus two. Right, and it's, it's part of this much longer and maybe slightly more complex statement. Um, but we can real quickly kind of pull this apart. Um, ECX, well, we weren't talking about ECX. We were talking about the export directory. But if we go back to what ECX contains, um, ECX is the base of our um, LDR data table structure. So that means, because fortunately we have all of our um, structures mapped in, we can go in here and we can find the LDR data table entry base DLL name. All right now, you notice this base DLL name dot length, and I think if we just spend a moment here in WinDebug, we can make a little bit more sense of that uh, LDR data table entry. And you'll see, let's scroll back in the structure, um, base DLL name is actually of type Unicode string, right? And this is another one of those important. Uh, this means that if we look at that structure, because it's not just simply a pointer to the full name or the base name, it's a pointer to this structure, it actually begins with a length, a maximum length, and then finally, at an offset of four hex, a pointer to the string or the buffer that contains the, the actual API name. 
right? So that's why this is moved into EDI and you'll see this EDI plus four, right? Well, that's pointing to the Unicode string structure. It's skipping the length and the maximum length and it's getting the buffer. So that way it is essentially a pointer to the string of the DLL name. So right before we continue to walk the export table, what's actually happening here is the, the base of the DLL is pushed onto the stack. And then this value zero is pushed onto the stack for this function call right here. So what is this function doing? Well, if we navigate into here, uh, we can see that um, these, these types are wrong. So let's set the type. Um, we have, this is actually a char pointer. So we can update that to be a character pointer. Um, this is in fact an int or a, a D word, I guess, because uh, that's just a value. Um, and this is computing essentially a, a checksum based off of the DLL name. All right, so let's update this further and say this is the DLL name. And this happens to be actually a seed value, but in this case it's zero, so it's not really used. And so we won't need to go through all of this because if we went through every single instruction and function, this, this video series would turn into a, a week's long worth of uh, college level coursework. Um, but the DLL, uh, this, this is a very common pattern here. I think it's actually a little bit easier to recognize inside of the disassembly, but it's comparing AX to 41 hex and 5A. And what it's saying is that if the characters are uppercase, this will lowercase them. That way it normalizes the DLL name and then it goes ahead and it uses this logic here to do a rotate using the seed and the actual character value. This is then how it computes a checksum for the DLL name and returns that as the return result. So we could call this something like uh, DLL name checksum. And if we go back to where that was called, that's what this value is going to contain. So we'll say that this is the DLL name uh, computed checksum, just to differentiate it from the function a little bit better. And you'll notice uh, here in the decompiler, it's V5. So we'll do this, uh, give this a good name as well. I'll just see if we'll, it'll take both. Um, we'll just add a suffix to it. Um, and you'll notice now that, that that value right here over in the pseudocode, that's used for this call a little bit later on right here. All right, so as you can see, the deeper we get, the more we unravel. Um, and now what we are looking at is sort of a another twist to this sort of classic API resolution technique. And that is that instead of just simply using the, you know, the value of the, the DLL or using the value of the API, computing the checksum and then comparing, it's, it's going to actually create a checksum based off of that, the DLL name. And then this method here, it's going to then also use that as a seed value in order to, um, seed the calculation with the name of the DLL and the API, right? So this is just another uh, kind of twist on that classic technique. So how does that all exactly work? Well, to keep these videos somewhat reasonable, we'll tackle that in the next one. So hope to see you then.